Olá, eu sou o Miguel Cavalcante do Man in the Arena, estamos aqui no Case 2014 e agora conversamos com Gabe Carp, que é da Detroit Venture Partners, ele é partner dessa, dessa empresa e ele acabou de fazer uma, uma apresentação, um painel é, sobre segredos de como vender a sua empresa com sucesso. Hello. Gabe, very good to, to have you here. Uh, we talk about the five secrets of a successful exit. And the first one was to have an adult at the team. And my understanding is that it's not the age that, that counts, but could you describe the, the abilities, uh, what the, the adult should do to be, could be called an adult at the company you are looking to, to sell? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, it's not the age, it's the maturity and the experience. So you could have a very young person who has a lot of experience in running a startup, running a company. That's probably the most important piece. Um, somebody who's been through the war of a true startup to some success. And by the way, they don't necessarily have to have been successful in the company. Maybe they failed. Uh, but they learn from the failure. And if they, can, if they can speak to the failure and talk about why and what they would change, and it's articulate and it makes sense, you know, you can look at that and say, okay, this person has realism. They really understand what they're going to be facing and uh, they've got some battle scars and they've got a plan how to avoid those. That really helps. On your way of understanding and studying the people that you are going to work together, what's unacceptable? Um, hubris uh, is unacceptable. Uh, I, think, I think it all comes down to lack of awareness. You know, it's know thyself. Um, know where you're strong, know where you're weak, and have the... Usually that comes with age, huh? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. You know, and, and having the maturity to, and the, the confidence to say, hey, I'm not good at that. Uh, I need help with that. Um, you know, I... I I have unfortunately seen it uh, more times than I would like where um, ego got in the way and people didn't raise their hand and say, I need help here because bad things are happening and uh, they're going to continue to happen unless I can get this fixed. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really not a sign of weakness to raise sure. your hand and say that. Um, in fact, it's a sign of even more strength because yes. the people that don't, they're just, they become desperate. Uh, they, they, try to deceive, they try to hide the problem um, out of ego, and that's really bad. Yeah, you need to be kind of a mature to say, I don't know, to say I have a question, to have a, I have a problem, it's kind of thing, so. Yeah. Very good. The second secret is to explain easily your company or product, whatever you do. What's the do's and don'ts of how to do the first description of your company when you are meeting a potential investor or something like that? Well, the, the do is to create a clear vision of what the company does in 30 to 45 seconds. Um, the, you know, and then maybe you could go a little bit longer, but if you're talking for five minutes and no one understands what you're doing, that's bad. And I think I, I mentioned in the session, we, I've been in pitches with my partners where we're looking at each other after 20 minutes saying, do, do you know what these guys do? Um, and that's a really bad sign. And, and, and I would say it's a good, it's a good litmus test. It's a good, um, you know, we talk about smoke tests or litmus tests. It's, it's, a, it's a flag of other abilities because mm, okay. um, business is complex and the ability to execute requires a skill of distilling things down to their simplest, most fundamental components and then addressing them that way. And one of them is just telling your story. If you can't tell your story succinctly, how are you going to take a complex problem and address that succinctly? So it, it's, it's sort of a measure. If you can't do this, then that probably means you can't do some other things too. Very cool. I, have a, I believe that if you can like, uh, say that people need to practice writing, because, because if you can write, you can think. And it's a good test to, to understand how the people can the person can think and can understand their business if they can explain that in a very short way. And yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's a saying, I, there's an American author who said, uh, I wanted to write you a short note, but I didn't have time, so yes. I wrote you a yeah, long yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very, very good. And uh, the third secret is be appealing. 
What's appealing to you? Uh, realism. Um, again, passion is, passion is appealing. Uh, but to have, have real passion, real fire in the belly, to execute on your plan, to, to, you have a vision in your mind and, the, and just a burning desire to make that a reality. Um, you know, something that every morning you're going to kick off the sheets and run into work and, and work on it. And, um, you know, that, uh, I think part of appealing that passion does need to be not tempered, but at least honed in such a way that you're not unrealistic. You know, I think I, I during the session I mentioned, I, somebody actually said to us, this business is going to be bigger than the internet. <laughs> so that's passionate, but that's crazy. We don't we don't invest in crazy. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And, and how do you test uh, passion against like just being an extrovert and being like very good at talking? Uh, it, it, you ask a lot of questions, um, and you ask a lot of open-ended questions to get people talking about. Why did they come up with this business? Where did the idea come from? How did, how, you know, how did they arrive at the conclusion that this was a good business? And um, what is their vision? You know, what's the, and not so much their vision, but what's their path to that vision? So it's one thing to say, you know, there's the mountaintop and we're going to get there. Okay, that's important, but I want to know, have you picked out which path you're going to take up there? And, you know, are you prepared that if, if a big boulder falls in the middle of that path, you've got another path to get there? Um, as, you, as you get people talking in those terms, you understand how they think and you understand um, whether they're relying on just, you know, the will of God or actual hard work. Um, okay. Yeah. The secret number four is get your shit together. Yeah. And you talk about like dashboards and kind of thing. So uh, if I'm going to talk to you and I have a company and I don't have my dashboard, how would you suggest me or help me to build my dashboard? Um, I think number one, you've got you to have a, if you're the CEO, um, you probably need a series of dashboards. As the CEO, there's the dashboard you look at. But you also need to help your team. Your sales guy is looking at one dashboard. Your operations guy is looking at another dashboard. And you want to uh, you want to make sure that each person is focused on those things where they can really move the needle, and that they don't have any information on their da on their dashboard that they don't really have direct influence over. So one way to think about it is a football game. the 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 most sim the simplest dashboard is the scoreboard. Everyone in the in the crowd can look at that and in about eight to ten seconds understand everything they need to know about the game. Um, they know how much time is left, they know who's winning, they know who's in possession, all, you know, fouls, timeouts, all those things. Uh, but as you drill down into the, um, into, the, into the individual teams, the coach has probably a number of dashboards that he looks at. And then the, the coaches break up. There's, and I guess there's, I, I don't understand uh, soccer. soccer as yeah. well as I understand American football. But <laughs> in, in American football, you've got an offensive coordinator who's looking at a completely different set of data than the defensive coordinator, who's looking at a completely different set of data than the special teams. Um, but all of those dashboards, you want to be able to, in eight to 10 seconds, know exactly what you need to know. You know, if it's your sales guy, he's got to be looking at pipeline. What are, the, what are the deals that are in the pipe that are going to close in the next 30 days versus what's in the pipe that's not going to close for maybe another six months? Because that information will drive decisions that need to be made in the next five minutes and in the next five hours and in the next five days and the next five weeks. Very good. The secret number five is go make friends. Uh, what type of friendships and what do you recommend to develop friendships on this geo-making goal? Yeah, I think there are, uh, there are a couple different types of friendships you want. Um, Certainly, I mean, the focus of the talk today was more about making friends in the investing community, um, establishing relationships that are early enough where when it comes time to actually raise money or look to be acquired, uh, the people that you're going to go speak to, no one's a stranger. Everybody knows who you are. They've known you for ideally a, a year or two, and they've tracked your progress all along. Um, that's one set of, of friendships. There's another um, that's in mentorship. 
Uh, and you know, a, a lot of entrepreneurs are young, they're starting out, and it's great to develop a relationship with somebody who you don't necessarily uh, look to them as somebody who may invest, but you look to them as somebody with vast experience who can help you and is willing to do that. Um, and there, and most people who have been successful in companies and they have successful exits or they, whatever they've done, they like to pay it forward. They, they look for the young kids and they say, you know, I wish I had someone like me when I was younger. I'm not saying I say this, but the, you know, the successful entrepreneur says, God, if I had somebody whispering in my ear telling me these things, that would have made my life so much easier. I want to give that to someone else. Um, those are wonderful relationships to develop. And can you have the same, the both re re relationship with the same person? You can, um, but I think the, uh, the, the need for money in the future and the desire to get an investment in the future can get in the way of the true yes. mentor relationship. Okay. Um, it, it's possible and, and there are very successful relationships that, that are, have that duality, but that's special, you know, and you, you, you don't want to, you kind of maybe you don't want to taint the the mentorship relationship with with financial you know with greed okay and like if i i'm willing to i'm, I'm planning to make like a create a keeping contact strategy and like how often should i contact potential acquirers and investors and and what should i send to them like just like a roughly uh, what should i do on a one year calendar so yeah, the, the, the cadence of communication, I think, does depend on the stage of your company um, and, and you know where, where you're at with it. I, it's interesting because I observe entrepreneurs who are really managing me. Um, you know, I see them reach out and I'm, you know, for those that I'm willing to, because I, I can't contact Everybody, but, thousands of people, but, but... But is it good when they are managing you? I, yeah, it is, yes. because, and, and I don't mind it. Um, yes. That's fine, you know, and, and I, I recognize it. If they're really good, I guess I don't recognize it. <laughs> but but uh, most of the time I see, because, you know, I... I you, you, you have been there, so... Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I also think about how, you know, there are only so many minutes in a day, so if I'm going to spend time, you know, reading a, an update email from somebody, I, I gauge that. But I, I think that... Um, Depending on your business, the, the, the facts specific to where you are in your own evolution will dictate the right cadence, but I think the, a tried and true method, and there are many methods, but a tried and true method is one where you're communicating out saying, this is what I intend to do, um, and then later on you say, this is what I told you, this is what the goals were, here's how I performed against those goals. Um, that's really good, especially if you're uh, outperforming your the goals you set for yourself. Very good. Uh, if you, we like to invite people and ask people to go to action, and so if you could give the people who's watching the video like a challenge, a small challenge, something they, they can implement until Friday next week, what should you give them uh, to make their, their company better on the acquisition yeah. journey? I would say, um, I would say a good thing to do is, is to think about, so you say like next week. Yes. I would say, let's pick a 30 day goal. Okay. Pick, pick maybe the two or three things that in the next 30 days, if you accomplish these things, that's the, that's the best thing for your business in the long term. Um, and then you want, you know, every goal, you want to be measurable, you want it to be realistic, you want it to show how it moves the needle. And you know, if it's only 30 days, you can break that up into, into four sure. easy benchmarks uh, and establish those. And by the way, that's an exercise you should probably do every month and you should change those goals every month. Because what you're working on in November is probably not what you should be working on in December or January. Very good, thank you very much. All Gabe right. Karp from Detroit Ventures at Case 2014. Pleasure.